Welcome. In a previous video, I talked about setting up FileVault on a Mac, and FileVault encrypts your entire hard drive, so if your computer was to get stolen, someone can't access the data on it. In this video, I'm going to talk about how to create an encrypted disk image on a Mac. So what an encrypted disk image is, is a file or files that can kind of represent a disk, but you can kind of think of it like a folder too. So say you had some secretive files you wanted to store on your computer, and you can't use FileVault for some reason, or even if you do use FileVault, you may still want to use an encrypted disk image if you want more security. So I'll open up Disk Utility. You want to go into your hard drive, and then your applications, and then go to your utility folder, and then look for Disk Utility. You can also hit Command Space, and then type in Disk Utility, and it will come up that way too. So to create an encrypted disk image, I'll go up to File, and then I'll go to New Image, and you can say Blank Image or Image from Folder. So if you already have a folder of files that you want to encrypt, let's say for instance they're tax documents, you can actually choose that folder and turn it into a disk image. I'm going to create a blank image in this tutorial, but it's similar steps if you want to start with a folder. So I'll click on Blank Image. Okay, so we have two names here. One of them is going to be the name of the image on our hard drive. So that here is this first thing, it says save as, and you may want to have a name that doesn't draw a lot of attention. So I'll just say like liver and onions recipe. Most people won't really want to look at that. Then we have the name of the image once it's mounted. So this could be secret tax docs. And then we have the size. So here I'll make it 500 megabytes. And I'll get to how this gets stored on the system in a second here. So format, you could use any of these formats. If you're dealing with older Macs, you would probably want to avoid APFS, but if you're on a newer Mac, you can choose APFS. Otherwise, you would want to use Mac OS Extended would be good. So here's the encryption option. We have 128. AES encryption, it says recommended, and then 256-bit AES encryption, more secure but slower. So I'm guessing most people could use 128-bit encryption. Anyone who needs higher security probably already knows they would need the 256-bit. So I'll add a password in here. So you don't want to forget this password. If you do, you won't be able to access your data that you put in this image ever again. So I'll say choose. Next we have partitions. It says single partition, good partition table. So I usually just choose that. And next we have image format. So here we have the read write disk image and we said we wanted this to be 500 megabytes. So if we saved it as a read write disk image, that would actually make a 500 megabyte file, but there's nothing in it. We may not want to put 500 megabytes of files in it today, but we might put say 50 megabytes in it. And it may be years before we ever fill that up or we may never intend to fill it up. So we don't want to use read write disk image. Then you have sparse disk image. And what that does is that creates a disk image and it grows as you add more files to it. So if you add a 10 megabyte file, it'd grow by about 10 megabytes. And then if you add another 10, it would grow by another 10 until it fills up. And then you have the sparse bundle disk image. And what that does is it breaks apart your disk image into little chunks. And the reason it does that is for backup purposes. So if you have one of these disk images that has many gigabytes worth of data in it, you would probably want to use the sparse bundle disk image. So when it goes to backup, it can more easily back up. And I'll do both sparse disk image and the sparse bundle disk image and show you the difference. So I'll start with the sparse disk image. And I'll actually I'll say sparse disk image. And I'll put this on my desktop. And I'll hit save. So it's creating it. So we have two files that we see on our desktop now. We have the secret tax docs, and we have liver and onions recipe sparse disk image. So this automatically mounted this. And if you don't see it, you would want to go up here to finder and then preferences, and then make sure you have external disks on here. I think if we turn that off, yeah, it will remove it. And then we have the liver and onions recipe. So this is mounted right now and we can drag files into there like that. And then I can close this and then I can right click on this and eject it just like a thumb drive. Okay, and now it's stored in here. So if I say get info on this, we'll see this is eight megabytes. Now the file I dragged into it is I think under one megabyte, but there's probably some overhead in using the image itself. So I'll hit done here. While I'm on disk utility, I'll make a second one. I'll say new disk image, blank image. I'll change this one to the bundle. Secret tax docs to 500 megabytes. APFS. Encryption is 128. Choose. And the format for this one will be the bundle disk image. I'll hit save. I'll hit done. So here we have secret tax docs two. I will drag a file into it and then I will eject it. 
So you see we have two files here. I'll open up both of them. So we see the one on the left says sparse disk image bundle and the other says sparse disk image. The bundle is 19 megabytes and the disk image is eight. So there must be more overhead on this one. But there's another big difference is that the one on the right is a file and the one on the left is actually a folder. So if we right click on the bundle, we can say show package contents. I say folder, but it's a package, which is like a folder. And inside of that, we see this info plist, info backup, token, and then bands. And if we open up bands, we'll see these little files here, and that's what's storing our data. So these are encrypted. So now I'll mount both of these back up. I can just double click on them. It'll ask for my password. Okay, so both of these are open now. So now I have a large file here I picked earlier. It's 273 megabytes. I'll drag that into both folders. I thought I made these 500 megabytes. I must have only made them 100 megabytes. So I'll choose some smaller files here. I'll just do two of these. There we go. Okay, those are copied over. So now I'll eject both of these. And then I'll look at the info on both of these. So we have the sparse disk image bundle. Here's 77 megabytes. The sparse disk image is 73. And if we right click on this and say show package contents, we're going to see a lot more of these bands in here. So to determine which one of these you should use is if you're bundling things up once. So say you have a folder full of tax documents for the past 20 years and you don't edit those ever. You just want a secure place to store those. Then the sparse disk image is probably your best option. It does seem to store it in a slightly smaller amount. If you work on these files regularly, you should probably use the sparse disk bundle. That way, when you change files, it only changes certain bands and it makes backing that up more efficient. And hopefully you're backing up your data. So I use File Vault on all my computers, but say you work in an office and you have other people have access to your computer but you don't want them to access say accounting information or HR information you could put them in one of these bundles you do need to make sure that you eject it after you're done using it so they don't have access to it and obviously you wouldn't want to give them a password to it you could also store these on a server so say you work for a small business and you have an HR department and you want them to store the files securely on the server but you want to be able to access it from different locations then you could store this on the server it could be mounted up you could modify the file save it and it's all secure and encrypted so so that's all for this video. If you have any questions, please leave them in the comments. If you like this video, please click like. If you haven't subscribed to my channel, I'd appreciate it if you could do that. And thanks for watching. Until next time, goodbye.